Hi guys, it's Brandon. Um, this is episode number one of my How to Ace Your Unseen Case kind of video series. Um, if you didn't see my story towards the end of last week, basically what I'm going to do every Wednesday is going to publish a video and it's just going to be about how to ace your unseen cases. So it's really good for final year dental students, but I think that anyone in dental school can, can definitely benefit. Um, I'm just going off the cuff today, really. Um, I'm wearing, <laughs> wearing my scrubs literally indoors. I'm not even in my clinic today. I'm off. Um, but I thought it'd give me a bit more credibility and a bit more of a professional feel. Um, and basically, I'm just going to be talking you through uh, an introduction, what I'd like to cover. And at the end, I'm going to give you five tips on how to start your revision. I think that it would be good to get a lot of feedback from you guys. Um, I'm not really too sure how to work it yet. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be doing like 30, 45 minute videos or if you want smaller five to 10 minute videos more frequently. Um, I haven't really decided that. I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow. I've got a plan of how things are gonna pan out and then and then go from there really. So I think I'm gonna try and keep this video as short as I can and try not to waffle too much. In the description, I'll put timings of kind of when key topics come up. For example, when the introduction starts, when the top tips start and things like that. Um, and we'll just go from there, really. Um, if you see me looking down, I've got a little tablet there with a few notes that I'm going to refer to. And I think we'll just, just get the conversation started. So I guess first things first, who am I for people that don't know me? Um, so my name is Brandon. I graduated from Barts in July 2021. Graduated with graduated with honours and got the highest in the year for my adult unseen case. So I have a bit of credibility. Um, I did quite well in my in my unseen case in my exams. Uh, and that's it really. I'm doing my foundation year in, in Dorset at the moment, um, down at a practice in a place called Blandford Forum, which, is, which has been so much fun. Um, it's a real baptism of fire, um, but it's brilliant. You learn so much. I've probably learned more in the past four months and than, than five years at university. Um, so I think that's probably enough about me. Um, let's talk about kind of the structure. Now, I want this to be a fluid conversation. Um, I'd love you guys to comment down below kind of what would be good for you. Are you looking for like long 30 to 45 minute episodes with, you know, really detailed um, kind of narrative along the side? Um, or are you looking for short and sweet, five to 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes on um, kind of different components? Um, lots of them. So yeah, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to be flexible. Obviously, ultimately, I want it to benefit you guys. Um, and basically, I've got a rough plan of how things are going to work. Um, different kind of episodes, if you want to call them that. Um, and it basically will start episode one, we'll be talking about the exam. So I'll probably put some unseen cases on the screen. And then it'll be things like, um, you know, you've got limited time during your unseen cases. Where are the key points that you've got to pick out? How can you write them down effectively in the minute you've got to, to go over this case? How can you present them in a succinct and um, accurate manner to the examiners rather than waffling on for a minute or two and including things that don't really matter? Um, and then we can move on to things like what radiographs are we taking? What special investigations are we doing? Um, how can we justify these? Do we have any guidelines that we can refer to um, and things like how to give a really good radiographic report in, in 15 to 20 seconds, covering all the key components uh, and answering that and, and leaving time for, for further questions because the best thing you can do is the, the beginning questions are quite fluffy. So give a brief description, give a radiographic pull, highlight the key components of the of the case. You don't want to be mumbling for, for three to four minutes on these when... They're not the questions that are going to get you. They'll get you a big bulk of the marks, but they're not going to get you the, the top marks. You want to be exhausting the examiner's list of questions to really get push yourself from from a high BDS to, to a BDS honours answer. Um, so we'll continue things like once we've done our special investigations, what are our differentials? How do we get a definitive diagnosis? Can we back that up with any justification, any guidelines? Um, what are the guidelines that I used? And it's fluid, like you give a hundred dentists the same case, you'll get a hundred slightly different answers, which is brilliant. And and then once you've got your, your definitive diagnosis, we need to talk about treatment planning. So treatment planning is going to include prognosis and the guidelines that I use for prognosis, because that's really important when it's when it's treatment planning. The people that are examining you, they need to know that you're a safe beginner, that you're not going to give... Um, 
are, you're not going to give options that aren't justified or options that aren't realistic. Um, so prognosis is so important. Then when you're treatment planning, we'll talk through emergency, prevention, um, restorative, and, and then recall, and what guidelines you can include in that, uh, how to address that, and how to kind of accurately present that to your examiner as well. And then I'll just give a few tips on the end about how real-world dentistry works and how you can apply real-world dentistry to your um, to your answers because they are looking for, you're going to be going out into the real world in a couple of months' time. And if you can demonstrate some understanding, knowledge, some common sense in relation to the real world, then I think that's that's one of the reasons that I probably got bumped up. So after that, we'll go into our cases. So I've got a lot of cases that I've saved from my foundation year. Um, and I'll put a case on the screen and then, and then we'll talk through it. So, for example, we'll have adult restorative one, which can be direct and indirect restorations. Um, adult restorative two can be removable pros, single dentures. Uh, adult restorative three, endo and perio, things like that, excuse me. Um, pediatrics, orthodontics will probably be two separate ones. Oral surgery, and then and then the big one that so many people replied about, which is which is oral medicine. And I remember at uni, we had lectures with about two hundred slides on on white white lesions, and then you think, oh my god, how on earth am I going to remember that? So we'll go over that. Well, and I guess at the end we'll do some unseen cases where I will just put a case on the on the video, and I'll do it like a. Um, I'll do it like an actual Viva or how we did it at Bart. So I'll put a case on there for and give you, I think it was one or two minutes to look it over. And then I'll just put some questions on there and you can talk out loud and answer it. And then afterwards, I'll, I'll give, you can pause it and I'll give the response once you're done. And I think that'll work really well. Um, so anyway, let's chat about these top tips um, and the five things that I kind of did and which helped me out when I was when I was revising. So... The first one I think is so cliche, but I think you need to start early and you need to make a plan. Now, I did eight years of university, eight years of living on the breadline, eight years of free McFlurries every time I went to McDonald's. Um, but I learned a lot in that time. I spent the first six years of that as a crammer. So my three years of my BSc and my first three years at Bart's BDS, I just, you know, crammed the six weeks prior to my exam. And it's great, it worked, um, but what it does is it doesn't, as soon as you come out of that exam hall, every bit of knowledge that you learn is straight out of your head. Um, you don't retain that information. What I did in fourth and fifth year, fourth year I started to do a bit of reading, um, say one hour a day. You don't need to be killing yourself three, four hours a day when you're you know, midway through the year. You're just going to burn out. You want to be smart with what you revise. If there's something that you heard in a lecture, or heard on clinics that you weren't unsure of, that's the kind of thing that you want to read about and reinforce. Um, so I think it's important to start early. If you're in fifth year and you're about to sit your finals, Christmas, January time is a great time to really, really ramp it up. So make a plan, say, look, this week I'm gonna learn peds, next week I'm gonna learn oral medicine, next week I'm gonna focus on this, and then just keep reinforcing it and just maybe every four weeks go, look, let's have a, a quick read over everything else uh, and kind of reinforce the knowledge that that I've got in the past week or the past three weeks. Um, and I think that that leads quite nicely on to, to point number two is that BDS four and five, you're, you're gonna be in the clinic quite often and the clinic is the best time to learn. Yes, you can be as book smart as you want, but it's hard to translate book smart to, to an actual patient. You may know the theory, but they're gonna throw spanners in the works and I found that the best learning that I did was on the clinic. So. If you see something that you, if you see something or you learn something that is new, or you think, oh, I didn't know that's how you manage that, as soon as you get home that evening, whilst it's fresh in your head, make a note of it. Add it to your notes, adapt your notes, update your notes about what works in real world dentistry and on the clinics. Because ultimately, when a patient comes through the door on, on clinics in dentistry, that essentially, if it's a new patient or an emergency, that is an unseen case. And that's kind of gonna mirror similar to what the exams are. So I think that's that's a huge tool. Um, and the people, this is number three, the people on the clinics have so much knowledge. Um, so you really wanna engage in conversation with your tutors. Look, I don't know what it is about dentistry, 
and people who study dentistry, but sometimes we think we're God's gift to, to the world when we really, we just look at teeth all day. I think that we go on with this arrogance that we know it all um, and we can manage these patients. And sometimes I was guilty of it myself. A tutor would do something and I'd, I'd take a step back and I'd be like, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. And I think you've got to remember that these people have been, been dentists for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. They've seen it all. You've probably seen less than 10, tens of cases, whereas they've seen hundreds, thousands of cases. And it's okay to disagree with what they do. That's why dentistry is so good. If you think, oh, I, perhaps I wouldn't have managed it that way, then, then have a conversation with them and say, oh, why did you do that? As opposed to this. And that's when you really start to open more doors. You start to think more laterally. Understand. And look, at the end of the day, these people are probably going to be examining you. So if you can get in their head and, and kind of understand the tricks and the, the things that they do, and if you have that certain person on your exam day, and you manage it in a way that they may manage it, they're probably going to appreciate that a bit more. Number four, so we're nearly there. Sorry, I know this is this is dragging on a bit. Number four is common. Common things are common. Lectures can seem quite overwhelming. You can have, you know, 70 lectures to go through, 200 slides a lecture, and you could think, oh my God, what do I need to pick out? And I think the most important thing to remember is that they're not there to trip you up. They're basically there at the end to say, is this person a safe beginner? Am I happy to send them into foundation dentists? to see patients on their own and take responsibility to themselves. So it's very unlikely they're going to present you with this super rare condition that is the last one slide of your oral medicine lectures. They're going to present you with something that's more common that will happen in the real world. For example, a white lesion. They're going to say, what could this be? You don't know what it's going to be because you don't have the histopathology, but you can have give a good set of differentials of the things you can be and you can also um, provide a management strategy for that. So if it's suspicious, you can do a two week wait. If it's not suspicious of cancer, then you can just do a normal referral. They're basically looking to see what you would do in that situation. They're not gonna hit you with some crazy autoimmune condition that's that's right at the end of the lecture that one in a one in hundred million people have. Um, so it's important to remember that common things are common. And if you can nail the common things, with a little bit of understanding about perhaps the things that are less common, then that's where you're going to get the majority of your marks. If you can ace the common things really well, answer it quickly, succinctly, then you leave yourself a little bit of time, perhaps for those extra extra questions at the end. Um, so yeah, I think that's huge. And So yeah, number five, and I think this is definitely the most important tip. This is the biggest thing that I can, that I can offer you guys. Um, I didn't do this for a long time at university. I was very much a solo solo reviser, but it's the worst thing you can do. The biggest tip that you guys can do to ace your finals is get a group of friends on your course and study together. And this doesn't necessarily mean all sit down with books. There were four of us, me, Sep, Gray, Tao, that two times a week we would make a case each from whatever we'd seen on clinics, or we'd just make something up. And we were present it in a style of your unseen cases. So we'd make a PowerPoint presentation and we would give people a couple of minutes to look it over. And then um, what we would do is we would just have slides with questions that we think would come up in the Viva. So present this case, give a radiographic report, what are your diagnoses, what special investigations, um, what's your treatment plan, X, Y, Z. And that was brilliant. One, because your colleagues... Like I said, they're going to know things that you don't know. You're going to know things that they don't know. You get really good at talking. Even though we were doing it on Zoom, we were talking to a camera. It mimicked exactly what the exam was like. And when I was talking to my camera during the unseen cases for finals, I felt comfortable. I went through my presenting complaint, my radiographic report so quickly, so decisively. And that's because I'd done it multiple, 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 multiple times in the weeks leading up. Um, so, yeah. I think that's the biggest thing you can do and, and, and to wrap up the video, that's my, that's my top tip. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that useful and I hope you kind of understand that the way we're going to go and that's it. Please, please leave a comment. Please, please tag people that you think will find this, this interesting. Um, cause I want to, want to reach this out to as many, um, dental students as I can. I've got, you know, I really enjoy, uh, dental education. 
for people studying. So yeah, let's go from there and, and take it easy, guys.